So uh, I'd like to do one more quick example, and uh, this is looking at the derivative of the, the pendulum data. So this potentially a, a more intuitive way to look at a pendulum is not at the, the angle, but the acceleration of that angle. So we can look at the derivative of the pendulum angle by specifying, specifying this d operator. So we want to take the derivative of x with respect to t, and we want to do this twice to get the second derivative. So here we have the, the, the acceleration of x, the second derivative of x with respect to t. So let's look for a ordinary differential equation for this. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to look for a formula as a function of x, and also the velocity of x, which is the first derivative of x with respect to t. So here we have entered in model of the second derivative as a function of x and the first derivative. So clicking off, you can see we're modeling the acceleration of x as a, as a, a function of x and its velocity. So let's go ahead and click start to start looking for the, the second derivative model. So what you'll notice different here when I click start is that it brings up this window and it it's needs to calculate the numerical derivative of the data. Since we don't specify the derivative already, it needs to, to uh, figure out what the slope is, what the, the timed derivative is of our data points uh, automatically from our, our, our angle data. So to do this, it fits a, a spline curve and uses uh, generalized cross-validation to pick a smooth of our data. And that smooth is used to estimate these, these um, derivatives uh, and propagate a, a new data set for us to model. So after that's done, it'll ask us would I like to resume my previous search. And no, I don't want to. I want to start a new one. So now we're going to start looking for a model of the second derivative, the acceleration of the, the pendulum's angle. So it looks like it found, um, starting to find some accurate models. Let's go and look at what these look like in real time. So immediately it's picked up on this uh, small angle approximation of a sine term. So if you know what, if you know what the, the physics of the pendulum are, you'll, you'll remember that uh, the, the acceleration is from gravity, and the gravity is dependent on the angle. So the further up um, the angle is, the, the stronger the, the force down is. So the small angle approximation for sine, the, the vertical component of gravity, uh, is actually x. But if we give it some more time, it should pick up uh, the trigonometric term. So looking at the most accurate term here now, you can see it's a small angle approximation component of gravity. And here we have the velocity. And so here, this is a negative. So we can see this is a drag on the velocity. So the acceleration slows down uh, more with uh, uh, increase in speed. Now we've picked up on the, uh, the sine term. And I'm just going to let this run for a few seconds and we'll see this print down. Now, one thing you remember when using Rika is that uh, different data sets, different problems will take different amounts of time to find accurate models. So in the examples I'm showing in this video, uh, like before, it only took about 30 to 60 seconds to find uh, a full model of the data. Uh, but different data sets could take you know, several hours or um, you know, overnight, uh, depending on how complex, how many uh, variables you're trying to model at once. Uh, so typically, you want to run this overnight if you're using data that has a lot of noise in it, for example. So let's look at the most uh, accurate model we've found so far. Uh, so this looks like uh, it's found the, the exact model of uh, a pendulum. So let me just click stop here. So we can look at this more carefully. So what does this say? So we've, we're modeling the acceleration of the pendulum. And we can see here that uh, it's picked up uh, one component of that acceleration is this sine dependence. This would be, we can interpret this as the, the, uh, the vertical component of gravity acting on the angle x that pulls the, the pendulum down. And we have this term here, which is uh, the velocity of the pendulum. So the faster the velocity is moving, the more drag there will be that acts against this. So we, we can see that the, the drag coefficient here is of b is 0.75 times the velocity. And the, the uh, ratio of the, the gravity over the length of the, the pendulum is uh, 96.24. So by looking at the second derivative, we can pick up a more intuitive model here that even explains this in perhaps a uh, more physically meaningful way in terms of 
the forces that act on the pendulum, the accelerations of the pendulum. So that gives you uh, a quick rundown on how to use Eureka. Uh, good luck using this on your own data, and be sure to check our website for updates of the software and uh, more help and tutorials. Thank you.